G'day. Varroa mites are the biggest problem facing beekeepers. How do you know if your hives have got varroa mites in them? Well, unless you live in Australia, most of Australia, then if you have a beehive, you have varroa mites in that hive. Because varroa mites are everywhere. Varroa mites are the biggest problem in beekeeping around the world. They can turn a strong, healthy hive into a dead hive. And it's very frustrating as a beekeeper when you discover that. Before you can get good at controlling varroa mites, you really need to understand the mites, how they breed, and how they spread. Once you've got your head around that, then controlling mites becomes more doable because you can understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. This video looks at the life cycle of varroa mites and how they spread. In a future video, I'll talk about all of the options available to control mites. There are scientists all around the world studying varroa mites, trying to find the silver bullet that'll help us get rid of them or control them more easily. Two things about that. Firstly, they haven't found it yet. And secondly, scientists communicate by writing papers and publishing them in journals. For the average person on the street, most of what they write is complete double dutch and unintelligible. However, they do teach us a lot. It's just a matter of interpreting what they say. In this video, I'm going to try and explain the main things you need to know in plain English. There is a lot more to it than what's in this video, and really I'm just scratching the surface of what there is to know about varroa mites. This is what a varroa mite looks like. They live on the back of bees for part of their life cycle, and while they're there, they are doing damage to the bees by piercing the side of them to drink their juices. But the real damage from varroa mites doesn't come from that damage, although that does weaken the bees. The real damage comes from the viruses that they carry and spread amongst the bees. Deformed wing virus is an example of one of those viruses. Let's look at the life cycle of the varroa mite. In the hive, the queen lays an egg. The egg hatches out into a larva, and between that point and when the bees cap that larva over, mites crawl down into the cells, males and females. While they're in there, they mate. The male mite dies, the female mate lays her eggs, and while the cell is capped, the eggs hatch out. The mother and her children live on the larva by sucking juices from it, which weakens them. And then when the bee finally emerges and climbs out of that cell, she is carrying with her mother and children mites. So there are two phases to the life cycle of the mite. The one that I've just described is the reproduction phase, and then the other phase is known as the dispersal phase. During that phase, the mites are on the bees in the hive, and those mites are referred to as phoretic mites. Those are mites living on bees. That's really important when we come to talk about controlling mites, because most mite control techniques that we have available to us only kill phoretic mites. The mites in the brood are protected by the wax cappings. Once the mites get out into the hive on the back of that bee that's just emerged, they are very adept at jumping from bee to bee. They tend to cluster around the brood chamber, but they do live on all ages of bees, mainly on nurse bees, but also on drones and on foraging bees. During the dispersal phase of the mite's life cycle, they often hitch a ride with a forager bee out of the hive and away off with that forager bee into the wider area around. Sometimes those mites will climb off the bees while they are on a flower and wait for the next bee to come along. And then, as you can see in this clip, they are really good at jumping onto a bee and catching a ride. Let's just watch that again. That little mite is really quick. It can leap 
onto the bee and scurry up onto its back and grab on tight so that when the bee takes off, the mite goes with it. So what this means is that there are actually four ways that your hive can get infected with mites. One is from mites emerging with bees out of the brood. But even if you've got a hive that is completely clean of mites, 100% gone, mites can still come in the front door. They can come back in with forager bees that have either picked them up from flowers or other bees while they've been out foraging, or they can bring them back into the hive if they were away foraging when you treated the hive. And you can also have bees coming into the hive and bringing mites with them that are either drift bees, bees that have gone into the wrong hive, or robber bees coming in to steal honey from your hive. So your hive is under constant infestation pressure from mites. No matter how good a beekeeper you are, this is going to be happening. It's actually hard to see the mites with the naked eye. Unless you do tests to find out the mite levels in your hive, you can open it up, look inside, the bees look healthy, and the problem that's lurking in there is in virtually invisible to you. So the fact that the mites are spending a big percentage of their life cycle under the capped brood inside the hive does mean it's virtually impossible to get a 100% kill of the mites in the hive with the treatments that are available to us. So mites are an ongoing problem. Thinking that because you've treated that your hive is mite free and that the problem has gone away is a recipe for dead hives. Randy Oliver has done a lot of work in this area. He has found that mite levels can increase 50 fold in your hive over six months if you've got brood in your hive during that period. So if you start with one mite, six months later, you'll have 50. If you start with 100 mites, six months later, without treatment, you'll have 5,000 mites in the hive. In fact, the numbers continue to increase beyond that, but if you haven't treated it after six months, then the numbers are pretty much academic because your hive is going to die. The biggest impact that mites have on a hive is in the autumn, when the mite levels spike and at the same time bee numbers drop and therefore the number of mites per bee goes way up through the roof and at that point the damage that's done to the bees becomes irreversible in the hive because at that time of year the hive is making winter bees. Bees normally live 42 days in the summertime but in the winter time they produce bees that are going to stay in the hive all winter and they might live up to 140 days. If those winter bees are affected by high mite levels as they're being made inside the brood and while they're in the hive, the damage that's done to them and the virus load that they carry will dramatically shorten their life. So the typical winter dead out caused by mites is a hive that's still got lots of honey in it and has a tiny little cluster of bees dead in the middle with a queen in amongst them. And what's happened there is that the bees lifespan has been shortened by the mite damage and the bees die off, the population reduces, the size of the cluster gets smaller and smaller till eventually they just don't have the critical mass to produce the heat to keep themselves alive and they die. This video might have been full of gloom and doom, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. You can manage your mite levels in your hive. You can keep the majority of your hives alive despite the mites, and we'll address that in the next video. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to know more about controlling mites and keeping your hives alive, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.